Hi guys, Marco here. In this video, we'll be doing a quick GPU and APU start. We won't be going through all the checklists, we'll basically just go over the main actions that you need to do to start the plane and start the engines. If you're interested in a full cold and dark power-up including all the standard operating procedures, you can watch our second video. First, we'll check the overhead panel and we need to make sure that all the switches are in the 12 o'clock position except for battery one, battery two, emergency lights and the electric pump A for hydraulic system three. So this is all looking good and we can now go ahead and connect the GPU. You could hear it starting up there. We can now see that the GPU is available and we can go ahead and turn the battery one to on and battery two to auto. Now the batteries can only provide DC power, which is not enough to power all the electrical systems and all the avionics. Instead, it will only power the essential buses. This means that when you turn the batteries on or if you lose AC power in flight, you'll only see the MFD on the captain's side, the ICAS, the standby display, the clock and the right MCDU. As you can see, some of the instruments are still aligning right now, so it all takes a moment before all instruments load fully. Next, we can go and press the GPU button, so it's going to change from available to in use. And now all the avionics will load fully. And we can go ahead and have a look at the flight control page, where we'll see the flight control test in progress. And now we can also go and have a look at the electrical page where we can see that the GPU is currently powering all the buses. All right, we can go back to status. And we can see that all the avionics are still loading. Some of them are fully loaded now. Perfect. All right, now let's have a look at the checklists. So this is all good, GPU button, we just pushed it in. Next one is fire extinguisher panel, so we need to do the fire test. When we press the test button, we want to see six things illuminate on the overhead panel. So that would be the fire handles and these four annunciators. Then we want to see five warning messages on the ICAS and also four annunciators here. So one, two, that will be the master warning annunciators and we also want to see ITD fire annunciators. So let's go ahead and press the fire test button. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five ICAS messages. And one, two, three, four. So now the fire test is done and we can go ahead and turn on the APU. On the ICAS, we want to be looking at this section right here. First, we'll turn the switch to the on position and we'll see dashes here. Once the dashes disappear and the yellow box shows up, that means that the APU is now ready to start. So we can now turn the switch to the start position and hold it there for a few seconds. Let it go. We can also see that the GPU jumped from in use to available because the APU has priority over GPU. And the APU will now be powering all the buses. Next we'll do the annunciators test as well. So we need to make sure that all the annunciators are illuminated when we press the button, apart from the ones that are illuminated during other tests. Okay. Emergency light selector, so we need to turn the switch to the on position and make sure that the light illuminates and we also have the associated ICAS messages and then we can turn it back to the armed position. Nav switch is pretty much always on by default, the hydraulic panel, that's all good. Passenger signs, we can all set them to on. Pressurization panel, that's all good. Flight instruments cross-check, we'll skip that in this video since it's covered in our second video. 
And now normally we would wait for all the cabin doors to close before we continue the before the start checklist below the line. But once again, we can skip it for this video. And let's go directly into starting the engines because that's what we're all waiting for. So let's start with engine number one. Starting the engines on the E-Jets is pretty straightforward. It's all very automated and we pretty much only have to turn the start switches from the stop position to the run and then start position. Hold it there for two seconds and let go. And now we just need to monitor the ICAST. So we'll see that N2 has just started spooling up. We can also see that the ignition has started. ITT is going up, uh, fuel flow is up, and we can also see that uh, engine oil pressure is up. N1 is now coming up as well. And at around 56 N2, the starter should cut off. And once we reach around 62 N2, this red line will jump to an advanced position and we will hear a click. That click will tell us that the reversers were enabled on the throttles. And I just heard it and we also saw it jump right there, so now the reversers are enabled. Okay, that looks like a self-sustaining start of engine number one. And at this point we would normally do a two minute warm up, but let's skip that and go directly to start of engine number two. So once again, we'll turn the start switch to the start position, hold it there for one, two, three, perfect. And while we wait for the engine two to spool up, I'd like to tell you about our not a newsletter, which has grown into a great channel through which we are giving our community a very personal look behind the scenes we share how these products are created, what the biggest challenges that we have to overcome are, we share tips and tricks from real pilots and it also allows us to directly hear your opinion and your feedback because we want to make sure to always do everything to improve your flight sim experience. The community has been really enjoying them and this is now the main channel that we use to share all of our news. So be sure to join thousands of others and sign up to do not a newsletter on our website. And now let's get back to our engine startup. Uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, and we just heard the click that indicates that N2 is over 62% and reverse thrust is now enabled. And that's looking like a self-sustaining start of engine number two. Perfect. Let's have a look at the electrical page. You can see that the GPU is connected, APU is also connected, but it is the engines that are powering the buses. At this point, I'm going to push out the GPU button and I'm also going to stop the APU. We'll see APU shutting down and it will take about a minute for the APU to cool down and then it will spool down all the way. Alright guys, well that was a quick power up and engine startup video and I'll see you in the next one.